Welcome back. This is L.A. Rathbone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Slackware series. Here we are on part four of Slackware series two, which is the series in which we learn to configure and use our Slackware system. Now, on the last occasion, what we did was we ran the start X command and we hit enter. And I asked you to meet me back here. So here we are. We are in the X window system. And more uh, specifically, we are in the window manager that we set up as the default when we first configured our system and that was done um, as th that was set up as the window maker window manager which a lot of people probably won't be too familiar with but I kinda like it so I think it's kinda straightforward kinda simple to use you got the dock on the right hand side it can be, it can be moved up and down you can move it to the other side of the screen if you wish um, but it, it has to stay as far as I know on the left or the right um, you got the clip you can attach you can attach applications to that as well. You can move them around, but those are specific to the desktop that you're on. Whereas, um, if we create a new new workspace, for instance, or a workspace two. So if I if I attach this to the main workspace and I move to workspace two, um, I have no more ex I have no more terminal connected to my clip. So I'm going to keep that over there for now. Um, you can go back and forth between the desktops by going like that, clicking on the arrows there. So, and you can ho you can also right click as we just demonstrated on the uh, the desktop to pop up a, a, a master menu for the window manager. We can do various things such as running applications, and we can exit the window uh, manager by clicking Exit Window Maker, of course. And it also has a really nice configuration tool which is accessible in the top right corner and it has a really nice graphical interface to configure the system we won't do that right now that you can do that on your own time if you wish so now that we have our system a nice gra beautiful graphical in interface running let's run a terminal in it so let's double click on this icon here to pop up an X term and in this particular window manager if you double click on it again it won't it won't let you um, run another one. All it does is hi uh, bring it to the forefront. So if I double click on it again, it'll bring the X term up front. So just like the dock on Mac OS X, it sort of operates as both an application launcher as well as a task manager. So I'm going to close this. You can always launch another one by right clicking on it and going to launch and launching a new one. But let's keep just one open for now. Um, this is the first time we've really been able to access um, a, pro a program from within a terminal and still be able to see our controlling terminal running in the background. So, excuse me, if I run X term within an X term, it'll pop up another X term. Whoops. But I can't run further commands in that terminal. It's being, the controlling terminal is waiting for me to finish this process here. So if I exit that terminal, it goes away. And I can do things again. Now, if I want to go ahead and um, put it an, ampersand, an ampersand at the end, like so, then what it does is it creates the terminal in a parallel process. So I can then go ahead and uh, do other things in that terminal and don't have to wait for um, commands from, from this terminal, don't have to wait for this terminal to exit, this process to exit. Um, so that's kind of useful in a lot of uh, contexts. So I just thought I'd, thought I'd show you that right then and there. Let's exit that one. Let's clear that terminal. You'll note, let's clear it again. You'll note one, one major thing though. Um, the We're not getting a nice prompt like we, we were before in the uh, console. It just says bash dash 4.2 and with a little prompt uh, uh, dollar sign. That's not good. We, we want to change that before we do anything else on the system. So let's make this window a little bit bigger here. Um, now, you may be wondering why would it be looking like this in this particular terminal, but on our console, everything's fine. Well, in X term, when you run it, it runs it as uh, a non-interactive, uh, sorry, an interactive non-login shell by default. Now there's probably a way to run it as a login shell, perhaps if you use xterm-l, 
No, let me check the man page. Dash ls. So if I run xterm dash ls, then now I do have my terminal. But we, we don't want to do that every time because most applications, most window managers by default will start the terminals in interactive non-login shell mode. So we want our interactive non-login shell to um, show us a to show us a proper prompt. Maybe it's just because I'm from a Red Hat background, but that's the way that I'm used to seeing it. So we know that our, our login shell has it. So let's kind of work backwards here. What is our file that configures our, our login shells? The master file for um, all users is the Etsy profile file. And if I, uh, um, and, but, but, but the manual will tell us that that is only for login shells. Now there is no global configuration file for interactive non-login shells. It's done on a per user, per user basis. And we didn't see any anything in Etsy scale beforehand, if you'll recall, that would have shown us any particular configuration for Bash, except for perhaps. No, there's nothing in there at all. The screen RC file, which configures uh, GNU screen, nothing there at all that configures uh, um, in, uh, interactive non-login shells, which is handled by the a file called. Uh, home dot bash RC and we don't have such a file obviously so again we know that Etsy profile somewhere in there it, it either has something itself that's calling it or it's sourcing a file that's uh, that's making us have a prompt I'll tell you right off the bat it's not sourcing a file that has a prompt so I'm not gonna go through and show you every single file that it's sourcing that would take forever so let's just go ahead and copy the Etsy profile file just for now because we know that it works to our bash rc location and now if we go ahead and, and we know the vi is still working as vim so certain variables are uh, being uh, imported by this non-login shell but how come the prompt variable is not the reason being the reason is that um, things that affect variables that affect things like the default editor as well as the path and other things are what's called environment variables, whereas uh, variables that affect the prompt of the shell is what's called a shell variable. And you can't, exporting those variables is uh, um, redundant. It doesn't do anything. You have to set them at the time that you run the shell. And the shell at the time that it's run looks for certain configuration files. Bash, when you're running it as non-login, looks for bash RC. We don't have one, therefore, doesn't know about any of these variables. So we need to redefine these variables in our bash RC file. So, but let's, we've effectively done that now. If we exit this and run another X term, we've got a prompt, but we're re-exporting various variables that don't need to be exported. So that causes a redundancy. So let's take a look at our bash RC file. Let's delete some things that, things that we don't need there. Everything here is all being ex exported. These are all environment variables. Don't need them. Let's delete them. Use the V. Oh, let, me, let me undo that with the U command and show you again how to do that. Hit the V key to go into visual mode. Use the um, direction keys that we talked about before to highlight things. And hit the D key to delete it. Path, we don't need to set that in our bash RC file. It's already set in our um, global profile. Delete it term we don't need to set that as a variable visual we've already done that in our local uh, whatchamacallit uh, bash profile file we've already seen that visual as vim is working we don't need to do anything with that aha set a default shell prompt yes so these are the two variables we want we want to set the ps1 variable and the ps2 variable now um, the ps1 variable says here's what your prompt looks like and that PS2 variable says, well, if, you've, if you're midway through a command and you haven't fully typed it in, this is, the, this is the character we're going to show on the screen to allow you to finish typing the command. And we don't need uh, having this open uh, greater than sign is quite standard for that. So let's keep that the way it is. This, this whole line, well, if we were redefining path display and less in term would be, would be helpful. 
but exporting PS1 and PS2 is, is, redundant, is, is redundant. It doesn't do anything. I'm not sure why the default Slackware file does that. It's completely unnecessary. Um, we could delete, delete it in the Etsy profile file as well, but I'm not going to bother. It's just going to be rewritten again when we when we reinstall Bash or if we upgrade the, the operating system. So let's just delete this whole line. We don't need any else in this. We don't need anything else in this file. So let's go back up here. Hit D and then uppercase G to delete the rest of the file. The rest of the lines in the file, rather. And now we have everything that we want. We've redefined PS1 and PS2. Again, don't need to export them because they're shell variables and not environment variables. So let's do colon WQ to exit and quit that, sorry, to, to save and quit that particular file. Let's exit this particular X term. Let's run it again. And you'll see that we have a prompt. And I haven't, uh, I don't have it running a fortune every single time because um, all we did was set the uh, um, the prompt to look the way it was. But I don't think that we're every time we run an X term in our X window system, we want to be seeing a fortune. It's cute to see it when we log in, but I don't think that it's really necessary to see it every time we start a login shell. But we don't have any any uh, syntax highlighting, so that would be kind of nice to have. So. Let me put this on pause for a second and meet you back here. All right, we're back. Sometimes I don't remember, remember how to do things, of course. So um, here's how we make uh, get proper directory colors. So um, what the what the login shell does is it sources a particular file. Now let's have our in order to source a file, what you do is you use dot and then the um, the file itself as long as it's as long as it's a uh, executable, which uh, it is. So what we want to go ahead and do is um, use, let's, let's have bash completion assist us in, in uh, editing this to our bash RC file. Echo dot and then etsy profile dot, dot d. Uh, what is it again? Core, de, uh, core colors, core utils dir colors dot sh. So if we just ran that, that would run, that would display that on screen. And let's append that using double greater than to our bash rc file. And now if we look at our bash rc file, we have this particular command happening in there. That's what we want. Let's quit that without saving it. Exit. Let's rerun our x term there. Now when we run ls, we've got colors. I think that's a pretty perfect uh, x term setup there for me anyway. You can always feel free to play around with your bash rc file. So um, I like this configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, run a super user there. And oh, we don't have root right as uh, having that configuration. So I'm going to copy two, th I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to copy uh, home pop rocks bash RC file right here to roots home, home directory. And I'm also going to copy home pop rocks bash RC to the Etsy scale directory. Let's take a look at those permissions, make sure that they're acceptable. Oops, there we go. Looks okay to me. Let's exit. Let's super user again. And we have a prompt. That's all the time I have for this episode, folks. This is LA Rathbone signing off. Good night and good luck.